Welcome everyone, namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today for practice. And um, let's start by centering ourselves and arriving to the practice. So find a seat when you're ready in your room that it's comfortable. Allow, even with your hands, you can spread a little bit of the skin, the flesh in your um, uh, butt, let's say, or uh, in your glutes to feel a little bit more grounding, grounding through the sitting bones. And mm -hmm. as you see tall, tall and elegant without hardening your body or making it rigid, adding any padding or support of any kind that you may need, give yourself the opportunity to settle and to take a moment to notice any sounds or noises coming from outside your room or anywhere around where you are. As we settle and we bring awareness and attention slowly towards ourselves, we invite the skin all around the body to start softening. And we invite also a combination of the heavy bones in the body to settle and ground, and the lighter bones in your body to float and lift up. So visualize perhaps your sternum, your skull, lighter than the heavier bones like the legs, the hips, creating that balance between steadiness and lightness. From the noises or sounds coming from the outside, we move the attention towards ourselves bringing the gaze down towards your lungs and in towards the spiritual heart. And we move from thoughts to sensations. So an opportunity to take note or notice temperature in your body, any tingling, pulsing, throbbing, any sensations. And just be with those sensations as they are this morning today. Then we move the attention a little further in and we give ourselves the chance to create a relationship with the breath. The natural breath that it's moving, that's moving in your body. Noticing perhaps the way in through the nostrils, the journey in, the places where it affects the skin is expanding, the release. And as we sit today, I'm choosing to share just a short piece from a letter that Jennifer sent yesterday for the ones who received the email and perhaps read. And there is a little piece there that I uh, found so useful. And it says, the practice of yoga provides a container. We can come to our practice with whatever we have going on. We learn to ground in the moment, to feel what is there, to witness and digest, as well as how to be tender and caring towards what we find. We learn to listen. 
through that process, the next right thought, right speech, and right action often emerges. We can count on these tools to support our lives. We are learning how to count on these tools to widen our reach and take care of each other. And I want to add another short piece that comes from the sutras and it says, if the practice of yoga doesn't help us to remove the symptoms and causes of our physical and mental problems, it cannot lead us on to discovering our inner being and does not lead us to understanding the nature and quality of actions. In such circumstances, the practices will be of doubtful validity. The more we refine ourselves through yoga, the more we realize that all our actions need to be re-examined systematically and we must not take the fruits of our actions for granted. So as we open this journey today, bringing our palms together and connecting them to the altar of our hearts, an opportunity to sit in gratitude for this opportunity to use our bodies as the vessel for awareness, for the opportunity to listen, to hold what shows up today and take care of ourselves with compassion, with loving kindness. and use this practice to move closer and closer to our truth and further away from pain and suffering. Let's take a moment to dedicate the practice to whoever may come to mind. And then we'll open with the own sound if you choose to join me, inhaling deeply through the nose, Big exhale, then breathing in again. Oh. We connect the head to the hands and the heart, the three together. Slowly releasing the palms down to the lap. When you're ready, we lift the head and we open the eyes. Welcome again, everyone, for being here. I'm Karina. And uh, let's start moving on to our mats. If you just joined when we were already started, I'm going to be using in a little bit a ball of any kind. It looks like a tennis ball or therapy ball. So bring one of those with you, uh, if you can, run and get it. And then what I did also is to put a blanket on my mat so we can start by lying down the ball. I'm going to just leave it on the side, I'm not using it yet. But yes, I'm going to use um, the blanket as it is to pat my body and come onto the back. So I'm going to start like coming towards quote unquote Shavasana shape. And as you land your body onto your mat, in the, on the blanket really, so it's a little bit more padded, just invite your bones to drop onto your mat and take notice, again, if there's any tingling or throbbing or pulsing, and also to pay attention for just a moment and feel if there is perhaps one side of your body that feels a little heavier or uh, a specific area where the bones feel tired or more pounded onto your blanket or mat. And then bring the attention a little bit more detail oriented into your feet. And notice without looking, just feel the 
um, I'm going to say the way that the feet are just rested, right? Usually they are rested out to the sides. It's very uncommon that when we release the legs and we are not applying any force or pressure or, or activation that the feet are in. So I'm pretty sure that for all of us, the legs are more like outwardly rotated. And now notice if you feel like one leg is more open than the other one. See if you can kind of like sense that in your, in your brain. And after you have an idea maybe of which one feels a little bit like more released to the floor, lace your fingers, bring your hands behind your head and with a little bit of support there, lift your head so you can see your legs and notice if they look like what you felt that one is more released onto the floor than the other, or if they look more or less the same, or, uh, or not. <laughs> or if it looks like the opposite of what you thought, okay? It's very, very uncommon that both feet are exactly in the same, uh, I'm going to say, angle, because we have usually, uh, the legs are different, and that also affects our hips. So just taking a moment to realize that, and then we release the head down again, and we release the arms. And as we start moving a little bit more, we are going to just wiggle a little bit through the legs, letting the feet kind of like go windshield wipers from side to side, just a few times. And then keep your left leg relaxed as it is, bring the right toes to point up towards the ceiling, and we are going to just start by that right leg pushing through the heel and trying to bring the right toes towards your kneecap, okay? So just push through that right heel, bringing the toes in, and then release that leg and let it drop. And then we'll do the same with the left, bringing the toes up to the ceiling, push through that left heel, a little bit more active so we feel the skin tightening and the toes moving towards the kneecap and then release and soften. We go again, right heel, we push, we bring the toes towards the knee, extending. You may feel a little bit of movement in the lower back which is also what we are activating and then release that side and then we go with the second side, pushing through the left heel maybe trying to bring those toes, even if it's like one millimeter towards your knee, and then release. Okay, let's go again, right heel, push that heel away, away from you, almost like if the leg wants to move away from your pelvis, and then release, and then we go with the left, heel extending away from your body, letting the right leg just be um, soft, right, or heavy, and then release. Beautiful, we'll do one more each side. Right heel pushing, making that leg more active and tall. The flesh of your leg is hugging the muscles and the, the bones. And then we release. And then we do the same with the last one, pushing through the heel, extend, extend, toes coming or curling towards the knee, and then release. Beautiful, take a moment here with a deep breath, in and out, and then we're going to bring the fingertips into the hip bones, right? Those bony landmarks in our pelvis. And we are going to play a little bit of a teeter-totter um, situation, let's say. So I'm going to press with my right hand into that right side, and then I release and I press through the left side. So I'm pushing into the bones with my fingers. It's not extreme, right? But I'm kind of like bringing that side a little bit more to the floor and then the other side. So like I said, a little bit of a teeter-totter um, situation, right? Pressing one and then the other and noticing the sensations in the back, right? Of the pelvis or the back of your belly. Just a few more like that. Good, and then I'm going to rest my fingers there on my hip bones again without pressing. And I'm going to bring again both my, toe, my uh, sets of toes to point up towards the ceiling. And this time I'm going to play a little bit with both at the same time, but I'm going to think mostly on my toes. So I'm going to stretch my toes or create extension through one foot as I'm bringing the opposite toes uh, towards my nose. 
and then I'm going to switch, okay? So I'm extending one foot through the toes and bring the opposite toes in, and then I'm switching again. Let's go a few times, slowly. Try to relax the shoulders so there's no tension in the neck. And again, you're going to notice a little bit of that movement through those hip bones that you're touching, right? And the lower back. So go easy. This looks like there's not a lot going on, but we are creating a lot of activation from the feet up towards the heart, okay? And if you are curious about it, you know, our, the soles of our feet are like the map for our bodies, right? There's uh, a, all the areas in the soles of our feet are representing organs in our body. So as we activate and we bring awareness into our feet, we are actually giving ourselves an opportunity to work our kidneys, our um, stomach and the lungs and uh, the eyes, many other areas, right? I'm not gonna go one by one, but okay. One more time, each side. Good, and then release that, bring the arms to the sides, relax the body again, let it be heavy for one full breath. Good, and then slowly two more exercises here. Simple, simple. I'm going to slide on the mat the right foot, bringing the heel towards my right glute, and then re extend that leg down. And then I'm going to switch, slide the left foot all the way until the heel comes close to your left sitting bone, and then re extend. That's why the blanket, the blanket is important. <laughs> Good, slide the right foot. And then re-extend when you get all the way to the end, push through that heel, and then we switch. Sliding the foot up, and then we slide it down and we push through the heel. Again, sliding the foot up, then sliding it down and you push through the heel, and then the opposite foot, sliding down and then pushing through the heel. One more each side, sliding up. We are activating here the ankles a little bit more, pushing through the heel, and then left side, if you're going with me, sliding back down and pushing through the heel. Beautiful, stay there for another breath. And now we'll bend both knees, placing the feet or the heels close to the sitting bones. We do this one last. And from here, what I'm going to do is to press into the heels and try to lift my toes. I hope you can see that I'm trying to lift the, uh, the very uh, toes, uh, right, or tops of my feet. And then I'm going to press through the toes and lift my heels. So we play with both ends, right? And then again, I'm pressing into the heels to lift my toes. And then I'm pressing the base of the toes and elongating my toes so I can lift my heels. And then again, push into the heels, lifting the toes. Press into the toes, lift the heels. Two more. Press into the heels, lift the toes. And switch. Last one. Good, then slowly release. Beautiful, now keep the knees bent, lace the fingers again like we did before. Bring your hands behind the skull with the elbows wide. And we'll take the cat-cow shape here, plant your feet. Inhale, arching the spine, send the chin gently up, not too much. Feel that arch in the lower back, press the elbows down. Then with the exhale, we lift a little bit through the back of the neck, belly in elbows coming towards each other. And then again, inhaling, we open up. Exhaling, rounding navel towards the spine. And then again, inhaling. Exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Good, then we come down, we release here, and we are going to roll slowly over to one side, pressing up towards a seat. 
Good. Keep that blanket for a moment. We'll take it out in a little bit. But sit on your blanket and then cross one leg in front. It doesn't matter which one. It's all good. Then we'll switch it. Okay? I'm going to mirror you guys. So we'll go to the right side first with a little flow here. I'm going to inhale, open the left side. Then exhale, coming back and switching to the other side. And again, inhale. Exhale and switch. It doesn't really matter if the breath is going like I'm saying. Just make a fluid circuit with your um, breath from side to side. A mini flow here. Beautiful. Let's do a couple more. One more each side. Opening the sides a little bit more and then coming back towards the neutral when you're done with the one that you're doing. Perfect. Good, now we switch the legs. So now we cross the opposite chin in front and we're going to start with the right hand going to the left knee. But the uh, opposite arm, so your left arm, we are going to use it first inhaling, coming to the front. And then with the exhale, we bring it back. I have a wall here, so I like to play with it, and I catch my wall, and I walk my hand into the wall. But you don't have to have a wall. You just, I, 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 I can see in the camera how you can see my arm, right? So my arm stays behind me. You don't have to have a support, but just keep that arm moving away from you, and lift the spine, take a deep inhalation here, and exhale. One more breath, even if that uh, arm is in the air. Good, and then we bring that arm back and we release. Beautiful, let's go to the last side. Now the left hand comes to the right knee. Right arm, we bring it in front, inhaling first. Good, and then exhaling, moving towards the opposite side. I'm walking my wall behind me. But again, like I said, you don't need to. Just send that arm behind, lift the spine, relax the shoulders, take a deep breath in. Exhale. And one more. Good, and slowly bring that right arm back towards the front. Beautiful, re-extend the legs, shake them a little. Good, and we are going to move out of the mat. We're going to take that blanket out. We may use it later, but for now we are going to put it to the side and take your tennis ball or therapy ball, okay? We are going to stand and we're going to use it again to go from the feet up. So I'm going to put my ball onto my uh, mat. <laughs> I hope you can see it there. And I'm going to start for, uh, for you guys on the right side. So first what I'm going to do is to place that ball on my arch, on the right foot. And I'm not going to push extremely hard, it's medium force. <laughs> and I'm just going to create 10 pumps with my arch. So I'm going to inhale where I am, then exhale, push a little bit into that ball. And then again, inhale, lifting, exhale, push. And again, inhale, exhale. Count for yourself, more or less, between seven and 10. And as we are doing this, the arch is related to the lumbar spine in the foot, right? So our arches in our feet have the same right uh, concavity or that same arch like we have in the lower back. So in our bodies, they are related and we are affecting that, but we are also creating an activation in our lymphatic system as we are pressing into that layer that is in between the skin and our muscles, okay? Okay, a couple more there. Like I said, not extremely intense, just medium force. Good. And then we're going to move to a different exercise on the same foot. So now what I'm going to do is to place the base of my toes into that foot. And I'm going to let that ball walk from the base of my toes all the way to the heel. So I'm going from top to bottom and I'm not coming back. I'm going back again into the toes and from there pressing all the way to the heel. It's like a straight vertical line, right? From the base of the toes 
all the way to the heel. Then I'm bringing my ball back, right? Because it goes far. And then again, from the base of the toes all the way to the heel. If you have a dresser or a wall or something that you want to uh, use as a support there because the ball will move and you may lose uh, balance, of course, do that. And again, a few more from the base of the toes and pressing all the way to the heel. And then again, base of the toes to the heel. Just two, three more. Notice their sensations. Good, and then the last one that we do on this same foot when you're done with your last one is that now I'm going to create circles all around the sole of my foot in that right side. So I'm going all the way to the inner arch, outer area of my foot, then on the center, I'm kind of like going like this, circular or zigzagging, and then I'm doing the same close to my toes. Don't go super hard, like I said. It's not extreme force. It's more mainly medium. <laughs> Good. Okay, just a couple more. Go uh, different directions, changing a little bit. And notice if there's any tingling or pinching or anything like that. And then when you're done with that last round that you're doing, just stand on your uh, feet, Tadasana, and notice if you feel any sensation or difference between one side and the other. Just standing, sometimes one side may feel a little bit more um, steady or connected to earth than the other, maybe not, maybe there is tingling or pulses. Just notice like a scientist taking notes without judgment, we are gathering information, so then we can apply right speech, right thought, right action. Good. And then we'll move into the second side, the last one, only two feet. And I'm going to start with the first one that I did on the other side. So only the arch first. I'm going to inhale. When I exhale, I apply a little bit of pressure. I'm showing a little bit stronger so you can see the movement, right? But you go medium pace. So pumps, it's like pumping, right, into the arch. And like I said, the arches are so important in our feet. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching a full two-hour class where we are going to be working with the base and understanding how uh, the placement of our feet has such an impact in the way we do our asana practice, okay? So I don't want to spread my... Um, talk too much here, but uh, very important to create that activation in the arch. It's kind of like the center where the prana lifts into the rest of our body. So we want to always create mobility there and flexibility so we have um, more movement in the whole rest of our bodies, okay? So I'm pressing and releasing a few more times. Good, and then, I'm going to go with the second uh, version of this exercise, okay? When you're ready for the second one, we go from the base of the toes all the way to the heel, and I'm returning to the base of the toes again. And from there, I'm going all the way again to my heel, okay? And again, this one is like a vertical line from the base of the toes all the way down to the heel. And again, let's do like five or six there. I'm not coming back the same way that I started, so I'm going back to my toes and all the way to the heel. And then again, back to the toes and all the way to the heel. Let's do a couple more. Good. And then the last one, when you feel ready, if you still need to do a few more of those, add that, and then I'm going with the circular motion, okay? So if you need to grab a wall or a dresser or the bed, do that. And I'm just going in circles and zigzagging all the way to my heel. I'm trying to kind of like touch all of the, the areas in the sole of my foot, even all the way to my toes, okay? Good, a few more of those. Good. And then, last one. Good. 
we come back to our standing posture. I'm going to move my ball to the side. Find your Tadasana, hip distance apart. Now notice, again, both feet, maybe more uh, of the sensation will be this time on the left, as you just finished using or working with that ball, if you had one. And notice stability and the sensations in the body. Okay, stay there for another breath. Good, I'm keeping these. Now we are going to try and imagine we have that tennis ball or therapy ball in both arches. The first exercise that we did, remember I said we were going into the inner arch. So I want you to imagine now that you have two tennis balls in those arches and instead of pressing those balls down, your skin or the flesh of your feet is just like bordering those two balls. So my inner arches are lifted, like if I'm going like, right over those balls, those tennis balls, let's say, and my inner heels, they are still touching the floor or the mat, and the base of my big toes, they are also touching, but the center, they are just like over those bridges or, or, or the balls, right? Those bridges of the balls that they are creating there. So do that. Notice if you feel a little bit of a different activation in your legs. Let's create also activation through the glutes, expanding through the pelvis, and keeping that and the activation in the legs as we lift the skin into the bones. Inhaling, we send the arms up overhead. Lacing the fingers, press your palms up towards the skies. Extend through the sides. Feel the sides opening a little bit more. Crown of the head moving up towards the skies. And then exhale and release. Keep that standing posture, Tadasana. We go back again, inhaling arms up overhead. This time, lace your fingers, letting the index fingers point up and the thumbs touch. Extend again through the sides, inhaling. We exhale and we tilt to the right side first. Can you still keep those arches lifting the energy, the prana, up towards your lungs? Spreading the toes, lifting through the inner thighs, and then come back to center. Good, let's go the other way. Lengthen the sides, and we feel to the opposite side. Now again, feel those imaginary tennis balls under the arches, lifting, 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 lengthening through the sacrum down, and hugging those glutes into the front of your body. We come back up and we'll take it one more time each side. Inhale, exhale, tilting to your right. Inhaling, we come back. Exhale, opposite side. Coming back to center. Beautiful, exhale and release. I'm going to move so you can see my body sideways, but you stay where you are. Now we're going to lace the fingers behind the lower back. Again, I want you to imagine those tennis balls in your arches. So press into the center of your heels, lift the center, spread the toes, roll the shoulders back, slide your shoulder blades down your back so you can extend the arms there and lift through the crown of the head. The back of your skull lifts up, Take a deep inhalation here. Exhale. One more, inhale. Draw your belly button up towards your nose. Exhale and release. And then from here, we'll inhale arms up again overhead. Again, I'm lacing my fingers, extending through the index. And now we're going to add a little bit of a back bend. So again, I'm activating my glutes to support my lower back and my spine. And I'm going to draw the belly button up, opening the chest. Keep those imaginary tennis balls underneath your arches. Lift up, send the sternum up to the ceiling and go a little further back. It's not extreme. I'm not going super far as you can see, but just opening the chest and creating a little bit more activation in the lung area and toning the core muscles, hips in, sacrum down. Then we come back to center, exhale and release, shake it a little. 
Beautiful. We go to the top of the mat so we can move from here. We're going to create a little bit more activation. Inhaling, arms up overhead. Exhaling, we fall, bending the knees. We're releasing Uttanasana. Stay here for a moment. Keep the knees bent so you can touch down onto your mat. If you need blocks, add the blocks. Relax the neck and the head. Take a moment here. Good, press into the base of your toes. You can bring your hands to your shins, inhaling halfway, we lengthen the spine, shoulders back, draw the belly up, exhale, release. Plant your hands, walk back, and we'll go to the first downward facing dog, okay? Good, so for this first downward facing dog, I want you to walk your feet all the way to the back of your mat and make your feet wide. Okay, beautiful. So why what I mean, if you take classes with me often, I've been doing for the last few months, feet are almost touching the sides of your mat, bend your knees, press with your palms so you can create more length in your arms and the sides of your torso. And as you have your knees bent, you'll feel almost like a little bit of a back bend in your lower back, which is okay. So we are sending the chest towards the thighs and we are making the sacrum the apex of your posture. So try and imagine your coccyx going up, up, up to the skies. Beautiful, relax the head there. I can see some of you, it looks great. Nice, and then as you relax the head and the neck, keep pushing through the hands. Make your hands super steady on your mat through the base or the pads of your fingers, okay? Beautiful. Super, then if you can, if it's available for you, try to contract your kneecaps more towards your quads and start lengthening the heels towards the back of your mat. It doesn't matter if they don't touch, okay? Just try to lengthen the heels down and then draw the pelvic floor up and your ribs down towards your pelvis. Good, take a deep inhalation there. And then we are going to walk the feet so they are a little closer to each other, like the hip distance apart. And we're going to bring the knees down and widen your knees for a child's pose here. Beautiful, we're going to take a few versions of the child's pose. So first I'm going to move, let my head come down and I'm going to walk my hands until they touch my feet. So you let the arms go back and take two breaths here. Softening the skin in the face. Noticing the sensations in the lower back. And then we are going to extend the arms to the sides like a T letter. So you just let your arms go to the sides. And we take two more breaths here, letting the upper back expand, breathing into the back of your chest. Good, and then we switch that and we bring the arms in front like we do many times in the child's pose. So we are evenly extending the arms forward, pushing a little bit of the sitting bones further down and take another couple of breaths here. Good, then slowly we lift up in towards the hands and knees, but I'm going to bring my knees closer to one another. So now they are almost touching and I'm going to push back down again. And I'm going to show you a little exercise that we'll do here. So it looks a little bit like a child's pose, but I'm going to modify. it. From here, I'm going to lift the right knee, bring it towards the front and then back down. And then I'm switching sides. Left knee goes out to the front, and back. And again, to the side, forward and back. To the side, forward and back. I have my knees touching almost, but you can have the knees a little further apart if you need, okay? Going back and again, knee out to the front and back. We are creating more mobility in the groins and we are working with the lymphatic system here and back and again one side 
and the other side. Good, we go back and now slowly come and sit up for a moment. Good, another one that I'm going to do here. So we start from this point. We are not sitting for too long. What I'm going to do again is a little bit of a modification of a child's pose into more movement. So I'm going to start from low. If you want to watch once, I'm going to start from low to the side, touching my mat so I can lift the hips and then slowly coming the other way, switching to the other side. So this creates a back bend, right? Because I'm opening up, it's really an extension in the front of the body. So I need to activate the glutes and to lengthen the sacrum down so I'm not creating a lot of pressure in the lower back. Let's try that, let's activate the core, okay? We go from down to the right, glutes active, belly lifts, open the chest, then we come down, other way, down, second side, we go back to the beginning, and down, second side again, and back, one more each side, to the right, and coming back, to the left, and coming back, Good, we come to the seat. Beautiful, when you're done, don't cut it. I see that some of you, you're still finishing. Beautiful. We sit on our heels for a moment, take a deep breath in, and deep breath out. Good, so now we are going to take a different version of this. I'm going to tuck my toes, and as you can see, I'm catching a block because this can be a little bit intense for some of us. So this posture, with the toes tucked in and I'm sitting onto my heels has extreme benefits for the opening in the soles of the feet, which is like I said before, connected to all of our organs and it creates a lot of mobility and flexibility in our joints. So that's why it's good to practice it even though it's kind of like annoying <laughs> until we get used to it. So if this is too much for you, you can always put a block in between your heels and your sitting bones and it will feel a little bit easier and you can rest your sitting bones onto that heel, heels, okay? Good, so then from here I'm going to sit for a moment, trying to keep the sitting bones grounded onto that base. Then I'm going to bring my arms in front, lacing the fingers, press your palms away from you, inhale, arms up overhead, lengthen through the sides again, opening the chest. Softening the skin in the face, try to relax the forehead down to the temples, your outer ears down to your cheeks and your chin. And then slowly exhale and release. Good, untuck your toes. And if you had the block, take it out, shake a little bit if you need, and we'll move back into down dog. For this down dog, I'm going to spin my fingers a little bit out to the side, so it's just like a tiny bit, like a smidge towards the sides of my mat. I'm pressing through the base of the fingers again, tuck the toes, and we go back up, downward facing dog. Regular, regular space between the feet, the one that uh, fits your practice and your body. Push again the mat away, draw the pelvic floor up, and again, make your sacrum that apex for your, for your shape, okay? So it should be super, super tall as much as you can. Good. Let's bring a little bit of strength here by uh, activating the core and slowly coming towards a plank pose. Push through your heels to activate the legs and then go back to downward facing dog. Let's go again, coming towards the plank. Draw the abdomen up towards your nose, push through the heels, back up, downward facing dog. Good, and we'll do one more, inhaling plank. Good, let's use the knees to come all the way down and then the chest and the chin, and we slide all the way. Beautiful. Okay, let's go from here, hands, right off your mat with the fingertips touching the floor. We are going to roll the shoulders back, extend through the legs, draw the navel in and the sacrum long. 
Good. Lift your shoulders towards your ears for a moment and then send them up and back, pushing the floor to lift into the cobra. Good. As you push, lift the sternum up, activate those glutes, say come in, exhale. Good. Bring the hands under the shoulders, tuck your toes, up we go, downward facing dog. Good, from here we are going to inhale the right leg up and back. Then bring slowly that right foot in between the hands, left knee comes down, and we are going to lift up. Beautiful. Super, watch from here. We are going to do another little flow. We are going to inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, we twist to the right, opening the arms. If you can, you're going to try and go and touch maybe your right shin, okay? And then we come back up and we release and we go back to down dog. We are going to repeat that several times, but I'm going into the second side. Left leg goes up, left foot comes forward, right knee goes down, inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to your left, maybe touching hand to shin, then back up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's go again. Inhaling, right leg goes up, right foot comes forward, left knee goes down. Inhaling, arms up. Exhale, twist to your right, maybe touching back. Back up, downward facing dog. Second side, left leg goes up, left foot comes forward, right knee goes down. Inhale, exhale, twist, go a little further. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Good. From here, we take a plank pose. Bring your knees down and push back into a downward into a child's pose. Take a few moments here and rest. Good, one more. Super, and then slowly start sitting up again. Catch one of your blocks, and we are going to stand, and we're going to use a block for some standing. Good, so I'm going to try and show a whole side, and we're going to go together, and then for the second side, I'm going to come closer to the camera, and then uh, you can follow with my lead, with my voice, and I can check a little bit what's going on over there, okay? So we are going to widen the legs. You are using the length of your mat. And we are going to start with the right side. And I'm saying the same side that I'm doing. I'm going to put my block behind the right shin. I am not using the block yet, but we are going to use it in a little bit, okay? So I'm trying to go from my right heel to the left arch, more or less. That's usually what we do for a triangle pose or warrior two. And we're going to work with a modified triangle. First, I'm going to hug my glutes in, widening through the pelvis, but that's really not the first step because everything starts in our feet. So I want you to check the position of your feet and activate again, like if you had those tennis balls inside your arches. So I'm trying to, even if my feet are flat, which they are in my case, I'm trying to really suck that prana, that energy up through the center of my arches into my whole body, okay? And I'm spreading the toes as much as I can. And on my back foot, I'm using the outer edge of that foot a lot so I can lift that inner arch. Let's send the arms out to the sides, widening through the chest. I'm not going to put my hand on the block yet because we are doing something else first, okay? So I'm going to lengthen the body towards the right, and I'm going to bring that right hand to the shin, wherever it lands. Left arm up, shoulders back. And now we're going to play a little bit of a game, okay? So squeeze the glutes towards one another. I'm going to slide my right hand down and then slide it back up like if I'm coming to standing. My left arm stays up. 
okay? And again, slide the right hand down, lengthening the sides, and then return. Beautiful, keep hugging those glutes in. Slide the right hand down, opening the chest belly up, and return. Good, two more, sliding towards the right foot, and coming back. And in the last one we stay, sliding. Good, now I'm lengthening both sides in the torso, sending the shoulders back. In this one, if you want, you can catch your block. If you are okay in the shin, stay there. And now try and spin the belly and the chest towards the ceiling. And we are going to turn that left arm towards the right and bring the arm over towards the right side, okay? Good, now from here, I'm trying to keep spinning through the belly and the chest up. You can always gaze down towards the right toes if the neck feels uncomfortable, but I'm still trying to bring the chest and the belly up and I'm trying to lengthen my left ribs down so I give more space in the right side to open, okay? Good, one more breath. Good, keep pressing through the feet, lift through the inner arches, send the left arm up. Good, and the last portion of this, I'm going to bend my right knee, travel with my block, so now I need it. I'm going to move it forward. I need to move because of space, and then from there I'm going to lift into a supported half moon, okay? Spread through the toes, keep lifting that right inner arch like if you have a tennis ball, Push through the left heel, spin the belly and the chest up. And then I want you to imagine you have balloons in your left leg, left thigh. It's lifted up with those balloons going up towards the ceiling. Breathing here. Press into your right big toe mount and keep lifting through that inner arch, the energy coming up to the heart, then bend the front knee and slowly return to that triangle and we move up to standing. Ah, nice, good. Okay, move your block to the second side, left side, and now we are going to switch, right? We turn the right foot in, left foot goes out, and that's when we are coming to the second side. Beautiful. Once you have the distance, ooh, that looks good. Okay. So first I want you um, to have those glutes in, okay? Remember that because we are supporting the lower back. Now I want you to feel your feet. That's the base. It's like from where we, the roots, where we enter our body, okay? So from there, lift from that in, those inner arches, press through the heels. Beautiful. Lengthen the sacrum down. I see you, Marcy, that's good. <laughs> Length, lengthen the sacrum down, beautiful, and extend the arms to the sides. Excellent. Relax the shoulders, even though those underarms, they are active, okay? Lift from the navel up towards the nose. Beautiful. Now you start coming towards the left side, like when we go to the triangle uh, shape. Beautiful. Keep going, keep going, keep going. When you cannot go any further or when, when you find your limit, go into your shin. Beautiful. Okay, super. Now, remember, I'm just saying for reference that sometimes it happens that our torso likes to land in front of the leg that we are touching. So you want to bring the torso right above that front leg, which is the left, okay? So there's less torquing. Beautiful. Now from there, we are going to do that sliding action, okay? So you're going to slide the left hand down towards your left foot. And then imagine someone pulling from your right wrist, wanting you to come up. And that's the way you come up. Beautiful. And again, then you go down slowly. It's like a sliding motion. And then someone is pulling from that upper wrist and lifting you up. Beautiful. Three more like that. Down, beautiful. Keep pressing through the feet. It's your base so you don't feel like you're wobbly or falling, which is normal. <laughs> Good. Nice. And after the last one. Good. Firm there, through the feet again. Good. Now we spin the belly and the chest up towards the ceiling. This posture is monumental for health in your spine. Roll the shoulders back. You can always choose to gaze down towards the toes to not upset your neck. 
And then we're going to turn that right palm towards the left and bring that arm over to the left side for a modified triangle. Now your right hip point, it's like if someone is pulling it up towards the ceiling and it wants to move away from your left big toe. Okay, so it's like two points that are like stretched or I don't like the word stretched, but they are like really lengthening away from each other. Good, one more breath. I didn't say it on the other side, but a reminder that balancing is not a must. If you prefer not to balance, you stay where you are. Right arm goes up to the ceiling, left hand to your block. And you can just stay here and keep working. This posture has a lot of elements to work on, starting with the feet. So if you want to just work on that action in the feet and the inner arches and opening the chest and belly, great. If you want to go a little further, bend the front knee, travel with the block, and we go a little further into that half moon, okay? And now I want you to imagine in the underside of your right thigh, you have like balloons lifting that leg, pushing through the heel, the arches are still active. Nice, and it's okay to fall and come back up. <laughs> Good, now try to lift the belly and the chest up, 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 up. Beautiful. Pressing to the left big toe. That will give you a lot of support. The center of the heel, the big toe mount, and the pinky toe mount. Beautiful. One more breath. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Don't, don't let it come forward or back. Good. And then from there, slowly, we bend that left knee to return. If you are in that balancing posture, slowly back through the triangle, up to standing. Yay, we made it. Okay, turn the left foot in. Take a breath. We have the feet that are parallel to each other. We are going to use this opportunity to add another mild inversion that is super good. Press again into the outer edges of your feet. Inner arches with those imaginary tennis balls. Inhale, arms up overhead. Lengthen the sides, tone those hips in, and we lengthen forward. Hinging through the hips until we take the hands down. Bring your blocks if you need them, okay? Good. I'm going to move sideways like I, I've been showing in some of my groups last week because I like this version a lot and it can be helpful. So now, as you're here, either with or without blocks, see if you can turn your palms so the fingertips point back. That will create opening in the collarbones and the chest, okay? And stay there, moving the heart away from your belly. Lift the belly up, but move the heart away from your belly, towards the front of your room or whatever it is that you're facing. Good, and then slowly, if there is the opportunity for you, if not, you stay here, see if you can walk those hands a little further back, just a little. And if it is possible for you, relax the head there and the neck and you walk a little further back or as far as it goes today, okay? Try to move those shoulder blades away from the neck. The position of the hands is making you already move the shoulder blades away from the neck, but try and not drop them down. Keep pushing through the outer edges of your feet. Good, then slowly bring your hands back so they are under the shoulders. Walk your feet a little closer to each other. Put your hands to your hips. Roll the shoulders back. Press into the feet. Lifting through the inner arches. We come all the way up to standing. Yay, okay, good. We are coming towards the end. Now we are going to widen the feet a little, maybe towards the edges of your mat, and let's take a squat. Supported squat, good idea if you need with blocks, with a rolled blanket under the heels or just putting pillows underneath, okay? Let's take this squat, a few breaths here. Good. And then a little bit of activation in the thoracic spine if you choose to join me for this one, okay? I'm going to extend the right arm out and I'm going to bring the left arm up. And I'm going to inhale here and then with the exhale, I'm going to bring the palms to touch. And then again, inhaling, we open, exhaling, touch. 
Inhale, exhale. Two more. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Good. We come back towards the center. Take a deep breath. And then we switch sides. Now I'm putting my left arm out, right arm up. Inhale, exhale the palm touch. Again, inhale. Go two more. Last one. Back to the squat. Lift through the spine. Good. And then slowly bring the hands behind you. Take a seat and extend through the legs and shake them a little. Good. Super. Let's bring the soles of the feet together with the knees wide. You can take a belt or just with your hands, catch your feet. Staying there for a moment, lifting up through the spinal cord, relaxing the shoulders. Good. One more breath. Lengthening from the groins out to your knees. Without pushing the knees down, we are just creating a little bit more opening and length in the inner thighs. And then slowly let the torso come forward and drop over the legs. Two more breaths here. And then slowly coming back to the seat. We bring the knees towards one another and we'll come onto our backs. If you have a belt with you, you can uh, bring it so you can use it, but it's not necessary if you don't have one, okay? We are going to come first onto our backs for a moment, hug both your knees and rock from side to side. Good, okay. Before we use our belt, I forgot, <laughs> let's take a block and we are going to take a supported bridge pose. So medium height or the height that feels appropriate for you, Let's bring that block under the sacrum, lifting the pelvis. Press through the feet gently so you feel that support there. Walk the shoulders away from your earlobes down towards your feet. Feel that expansion in the chest and take a few breaths here. If you feel like you want to go a little higher or you want to create a little bit more of an active uh, bridge pose, of course, you can do it without the block. If you are okay here, rest your pelvis in your support and keep dragging those shoulder blades in and down, away from the neck. Let the back of your skull rest on your mat, relaxing the brain. Two more breaths here. Good, and then slowly pressing into the feet, activate your glutes to lift the pelvis and take the block out to the side. Slowly, one vertebra at a time, we return towards the mat. Take a moment here. Good. Let's take the right shin in front of the left one, like if you're sitting in a cross leg position, catch your feet, bring them in towards you, pressing gently. So you'll feel a little bit more of the expansion in the lower back and the back of your pelvis. 
Stay there for a couple of breaths. Good, then we switch. Left shin on top, catch your feet again if you can, or just your knees, bring them in. One last breath. Good, and then slowly release. Okay, if you have the belt, you can use it here. If you don't want or you don't have it, I'll show you a different way. Extend your left leg or you can keep the foot on your mat if that feels better. Bring the right knee into the chest. And either lacing the fingers behind your thigh and pressing the thigh into the hands to extend the leg up. That's one way to send that leg up to the ceiling. Or if you have the belt and you want to put right where your heel is, you can just send the leg up with the support of the belt and hold it anyway. Mine is looped today, so I'm just holding there, but uh, either or, okay? The left leg, if it's extended, try to push through the center of the heel, activating there through the foot again, and on the right leg, without locking your knee, try to activate that quad and move the muscles into the bones, okay? One more breath. Good, and then either with the, uh, if you have the belt, I'm gonna show you the two versions. If you have the belt, you're gonna catch it with your left hand, so you can bring that leg over to the left side. I don't have all the space here, so I'm going to switch, but you're going to bring that leg over for the twist with the right arm over the head, going a little further back, okay? And if you don't have the belt, then you're going to hug your knee into the chest and with the left hand, you bring the knee over to the side. Then if you want there, you can extend the leg or not. And we extend the right arm over the head. Relaxing the shoulders, take a few breaths here. We are moving towards the end. Softening the body, releasing here. Good. Okay, then slowly bring that leg back. Beautiful, you can hug that right knee back into the chest for a moment before releasing uh, the leg completely and coming to the other side, okay? So again, then you extend that right leg, take a breath, bring the left knee into the chest, and you know, depending uh, which version you're using, either lacing the fingers or creating like a little basket behind the thigh and you press that thigh towards uh, the hands or the belt pushing into the heel up towards the ceiling. No locking of the knees. Taking a few breaths there first in the Padangustasana shape, uh, Supta Padangustasana, so we are just extending and pressing that heel up. Beautiful. Try to feel the expansion in the underside of your pelvis there. And then again, either belt or bringing the knee to the chest, let that leg come over to the other side. Sometimes we need to shift the hips a little bit. Beautiful. And once you get with the leg to the other side, try to, sometimes I shift a little bit my upper back so I can rest both shoulders as much as possible down on the floor. And the opposite arm goes overhead, so we create also a little bit extra stretch or opening there on the side. Good. Relaxing the back of the skull. One more breath. Slowly returning when you're ready with that leg, 
If you have the belt, you can just move it to the side, bring that knee in again for a moment. Relax that left leg next to the right one, take a full breath, just notice. This practice is the container so we can listen to what's going on. And today from here, I usually in my classes, I've been uh, inviting to end with the legs up a wall. But sometimes we not all, not all of us have a wall or a dresser available. If you do have in your room a place where you can send your legs up, support it in some way, maybe it's a tall bed that you have or the back of a sofa uh, or something, that can be a really nice and restorative way to end the practice. Um, even like I said, if it's like a part of a bed, uh, if you don't have anything like that, you can, if you want, just for five breaths, put your pelvis and, uh, above a block. So bring the block underneath the pelvis like we do for the bridge pose and send the legs up and stay there for a few breaths and then you'll come down for Shavasana. If you don't want any of those, no wall or the, the other one without, you can start coming towards corpse pose because we are close to the end. So uh, you can start preparing for that, okay? I usually recommend to not end the practice with the legs up if you don't have a support behind the legs because that's more active and the brain will be more like into holding the posture, right? So you don't want that for Shavasana. Shavasana is the surrender. So as you choose to come down to rest, find comfort with your props and your elements to release all, to be able to sink with gravity and invite the benefits the jewel of this practice to be integrated in your body, in your energetic layer, in your mind, in your emotions and your heart. The practice of yoga provides a container. We can come to our practice with whatever we have going on. We learn to ground in the moment, to feel what is there, to witness, to digest, as well as how to be tender and caring towards what we find. In this time of turmoil and challenging days, of the things going on for us and the world, an opportunity to come back to this container over and over again. So we can use this process to find right thought, right speech, and right action.